yogis, hi. So um, this video is for those of you who came to my um, handstand workshop, although anybody, I guess, who wants to work their core um, in a way that's gonna help your inversion practice. So uh, this will serve as a reminder for the things to work on. So um, those of you who came to the first day, which was arm balancing, we did some lolasana. And if you're looking to find your crow pose, your crane pose with some more lift, and really any of your arm balances, excuse my dog, she's about to start um, barking, uh, you really need to learn how to engage that transverse abdominus. Your rectus, they all have to work together um, as well as your hip flexors. And there is no better exercise for this than lolasana. So after you warm up your wrists, and I've got a video um, on my YouTube channel under the tutorials that has some wrist stretches, you can reference that. And you're gonna work on the lasana. So grab your blocks, you're gonna bring them next to your thighs here, and this is gonna be all about working that whole front side, right? So as you plant your hands on your blocks, you're gonna round your back, you're gonna pick up your knees, into your chest, maybe pick up one heel, right? Maybe pick up both heels, then maybe you pick up both, woo! And find that balance there. And that's really the kind of engagement that you're gonna need in order to find that crane pose, okay? And then we did some strengthening, especially for handstand day where we learn how to get that transverse abdominus, right? That's gonna be its job, is it's a little corset that runs around your spine. Uh, its job is to stabilize your spine through movement, which you can imagine is super important when you're upside down, right? So if you don't have that strong core, then you're gonna be all over the place. So if you really wanna find um, the lightness in your handstand, the stability, you've got to find your transverse. So a couple of ways that we work on that. One is we get to know it to begin with, right? So you can arch your back, and then if you tuck your tailbone under, push your lumbar, uh, that's the curvature of your spine, down into the mat, right? I always tell people that I imagine there's a blueberry right underneath the arch of your back. You're gonna try and crush it and seal your back, right? And then arch, and then crush the blueberry, and then arch, and then crush the blueberry, and now bring your arms overhead. I'm a fan of doing this with blocks. You're gonna squeeze the blocks, particularly on that little finger side of your blocks. Pull your ribs in, tuck your tailbone under, float your feet, and float your head and shoulders up off of the mat, and hold. Right, do reps of like 30 seconds, holding it here for 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Relax it down. Um, do that at least like five times. I'm not gonna do it five times in this video because uh, I taught all day. So, <laughs> I beat. The other one of my favorite exercises to do that really forces that full engagement is to take your block, we're gonna put it, bring it flush against that left thigh, right? Right now I'm using my left thigh. I'm gonna bring my left elbow and try and crush the block. And I mean crush it. Like you're gonna try and squeeze. Imagine that you could bust through that block with your elbow and your knee. And now lift the opposite leg. And now reach your fingertips towards those opposite toes and hold, keep crushing the block, hold it. 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, it wouldn't be a yoga video if my dog didn't ambush me at some point during it. Mwah, hi, sweetie pie. And then we'll do the other side. Take your block. Sit, come here, come here. Over here, over here, over here. There we go. And bring your right elbow <laughs> against one side of the block your right knee against the other side of the block. Start to crush it, crush it, hey, down in front. 
<laughs> crush it. There we go. Now start to reach those left toes out. Reach your left fingertips towards those toes. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Hold it. Ten. Nine. Keep crushing the blueberry. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Good. Set that off to the side. And then related to those two core exercises, we're going to imagine the kind of engagement you would need to go from handstand to crow and back to handstand, okay? So it's going to be a similar to this long exercise that we did just now. Oh, there's a kitty behind me. Where now I'm going to find my handstand, right? Ribs in, tailbone tucked. Feet are floating, biceps next to your ears, right? We're in handstand. Now I'm gonna send those hands straight up from my shoulders, bring my knees in and all the way to my armpits. Now push, 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 push. Flex your hands like you're on the ceiling, right? Like they're flat on the ceiling. Maybe only a few inches of your back are actually touching the mat. And then send it long. And imagine you just pushed it back to handstand. And then with control, slowly lower all the way to your crow. And again, handstand. Maybe one more time. Pull it in, pull it in, pull it in. Fight for it. Three, two, one. And send it long. And take a nice deep breath. So hopefully... Those will help. Um, I also wanted to go over the what we did as far as using the towel work for floating. So those of you who were with me, we talked a little bit about the difference between jumping and floating, right? Jumping when you're going into your vinyasa, your weight is in your feet. They stay on your feet, right? You bring your hands down and essentially students will just jump it back. Even if they jump it back and land in Chaturanga, they're still jumping, right? Same thing. Weights in my feet. I look forward. Ugh, and I bring it forward, right? Don't worry, I'm okay, Cindy. Whereas the difference is floating is that you actually commit to transferring the weight into your hands. So you're going to look forward, lean forward, use the strength of your core to lift, and then send it back. Okay, same thing on the way back, you have to commit to your hands. So lift your heels, bend your knees, you're going to push and float those feet forward. So, how do you do that? Well, I'm getting socks. Or you can use a towel, or if you don't have a floor like I have, you can uh, use paper plates on your carpet, just as good. But I'm gonna put some socks on here. Turn my mat to the side. And this little towel slash sock work is like such money for building your practice. <clears throat> All right. So now when you do sun salutations, you're gonna practice by keeping your feet on the, on the floor. Now I'm gonna commit, press into my hands, lift those hips high, come up on my tippy, tippy, tippy toes and start to slide them back as I lower down the chaturanga. Push it through, up dog, send it back, down or facing dog. Nice long dog, right? Fight to have to keep your feet in, because I know they want to slide back. Mine are literally sliding back. And then again, lift your heels, bend your knees. We're gonna push into your hands, lift, 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 lift. Maybe float your feet forward. Right, and just do that over and over. You can also work for the towel slash socks to get better and lighter into your crow pose, right? So going from your down dog, we worked on this, pushing into your hands, lift, 
Knees into your shoulders, pick up your heels. Lower back down, slide it back, chaturanga. Yeah? And then of course we all, you can do that also with your side curl. And that'll help you work your obliques at the same time, right? So as you drag those toes forward, you're twisting. And then you can come forward, send those feet up and back. Yeah, so I think that pretty much covers the, the core work that we did. But if you guys have any questions, you know, I'm always available to you. You're always welcome to um, text me or message me or call me. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions or refresh your memory. Okay, happy practicing. <laughs>